Hello, this is Josh Patel and today I am bringing you another biology lesson. Today we will be going over chapter 4 which is all about cells and energy, lesson 2 which is an overview of photosynthesis. So our key concept for today is the overall process of photosynthesis produces sugars that store chemical energy. And as we all know, plants do photosynthesis to, to produce food for themselves. They don't eat anything, they just produce their own food. So photosynthetic organisms are producers. That means they produce their own food and they don't eat off other organisms. So they're producers and then they're predators that eat producers to gain energy. So producers make their own source of chemical energy. Plants use photosynthesis and are producers, as we know. Photosynthesis captures energy from sunlight to make sugars. So photosynthesis in a basic definition is taking energy from the sun to make sugar or glucose, which is their food. So usually the fruit or vegetable on the plant is their extra stored food, as in case this corn. So chlorophyll is a molecule that absorbs light and chlorophyll is in plants, but it's inside the cell. And inside a cell, there's an organelle in a plant called chloroplast, which we learned about. And chloroplast is where all this photosynthesis happens. So in a plant, there's in the leaves, there are plant cells which com contain chloroplast, and the chloroplast contain chlorophyll. And this is also why plants are green. So here's an example. Chloroplast are in the leaf of a cell, or leaf cell, and then the leaf cell is in the leaf, and that's also why it's green. So in plants, chlorophyll is found in organelles called chloroplast. Photosynthesis in plants occur in chloroplast. Photosynthesis takes place in two parts of the chloroplast. So the grana, or thylakoids, and the stroma. So the grana is one stack of these thylakoids. One thylakoid is one little disc, and they're in stacks called grana. And the stroma is just everywhere else. It's the gooey liquid that fills up the entire cell besides the grana. So it's basically like the cytoskeleton in a cell or the cytoplasm gel in a cell. So the light-dependent reactions capture energy from sunlight. So light-dependent means they require light. So these take place in the thylakoids, and the thylakoids, as we saw, were the green discs. So light-dependent reactions take place in thylakoids. And so for these light-dependent reactions to work, we obviously need sunlight, but we also need water, and we need to remember this. It has water and sunlight. And you can kind of think of it how sunlight interacts with water by like evaporating in it, and sunlight affects water in many ways. So that's a way you can kind of remember it, but you can make up your own memory devices. So the chlorophyll absorbs energy, or the sunlight. It absorbs the sunlight and transports it to the thylakoids. And energy is transferred along the thylakoid membrane, then to light independent reactions. So after this light dependent reaction, which takes place in the thylakoids, is finished, the energy gets transferred into light independent reactions. So the products of this reaction is oxygen and energy. So let's look at this picture real quick. So this is a light dependent reaction. So as we know, these take place in the thylakoids, which is right here. So energy from sunlight is absorbed. Water molecules are broken down and oxygen is released. So it absorbs energy and water. And as a waste product, it releases oxygen or O2 into the environment. That's, why, that's how plants give us oxygen. And then it produces energy. So energy carrying molecules, including ATP, which transfer energy. And so the ATP this creates 
is transfer transferred to the next stage of the cycle. So the whole point of this first light dependent reaction is basically just to make ATP so we can send it off to the next cycle. So light independent reactions make sugars. So this is the final stage which makes the sugar. So these take place in the stroma as we know is the gel part surrounding all the pieces inside the chloroplast. And so this cycle needs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So this is another reason why plants are good. They take all the poison out of the atmosphere, the CO2, and this is why they need it for this certain stage. So it uses energy to build a sugar in a cycle of chemical reactions. So this, this cycle in the light independent reaction is also called the Calvin cycle. And we need to know this, it's Calvin cycle. So light independent reaction, you have to think of Calvin cycle. The light reaction, so the one we learned before, doesn't have a name. So that one's just called the light dependent reaction. But this one is called the Calvin cycle. So in this cycle, it, the cycle needs carbon dioxide and the ATP from the first reaction to produce glucose or a simple sugar. So light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle. So first carbon dioxide molecules are used to build sugar and six carbon simple sugars are produced. The sugars are often used to build starches and cellulose. So the carbon dioxide comes in, goes into the Calvin cycle using the ATP, which is this yellow arrow from the thylakoids to make sugar. So the equation for the overall process is six CO2, six H2O. So CO2 is carbon dioxide, H2O is water. So six CO2 plus six H2O and the equals or yields C6H12O6 plus 6O2. So C6H12O6 is glucose while 6O2 is oxygen. And in between here somewhere is sunlight because you need sunlight to produce to do photosynthesis. So the overall goal of photosynthesis is to produce 6CH12O2 which is glucose. That's the whole goal of photosynthesis to produce glucose. So this is an overview of the whole process itself. So first you get sunlight and H2O which go into the thylakoids which release O2 as a waste product and make energy or ATP and the ATP is sent to the second cycle which is the light deep independent reactions which is also called the Calvin cycle and that requires carbon dioxide from the environment and it takes place in the stroma and it also takes energy from the first reaction to produce six carbon sugar, which is glucose. And so if you were wondering why there's a six in front of all these, it's just the number of how much of each thing we need. So we need six CO2s, six H2Os to produce one glucose molecule. So this was the end of my lesson today, which was on chapter four, which is all about cells and energy, lesson two, which is an overview of photosynthesis. My next video will be on chapter four, cells and energy, lesson three, which is all about, it's just basically in-depth photosynthesis. So make sure you watch that video because it has lots of information we need to know to pass this course. So. Good luck in your quest in biology.